Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial and today we're going to look at creating picture packages in Photoshop. Let's start with the bad news. There used to be a picture package tool in Photoshop CS5 and earlier and it was really awesome and everybody loved it and then Adobe broke it in CS6 and has never replaced it. Now we've asked for it but they still won't do that. So now we're left with the option of either keeping an old version of Photoshop available so that you can make picture packages or you're going to have to go the DI DIY route and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So let's go and create a new document and we're going to make this because they're picture packages because they're going to be assembling multiple images so that we can print them. The kind of things that you might do if you're an event photographer, if you do high school pictures, all this sort of stuff, is you're going to need to have a print size document. So I'm going to print here on US letter paper which is 11 by 8.5. If you're in another country use A4 whatever makes sense to you that you're going to print these images on. I'm going to set this to 300 pixels per inch because I'm assuming you're going to be printing photographs you'll want nice high quality. I'm also working in RGB color mode for the same reason photographs RGB. I'll click create. So we're going to start by mocking up whatever design it is that you're going to use and you're going to create one template for each of the typical arrangements that you have. So if you're a photographer the likelihood is is that you actually sell packages to people. You're going to spend X number of dollars for this set of images and so we're going to prep a set of images if you like. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to assume that you're going to set up some 4x6s. So let's go and get the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to click here on fixed size and I want to make a 6x4. I've already got 6x4 typed in there but if you're not working in inches just type 6IN and then 4IN and you're going to get a 6x4 image. Click once in the document that's going to create it here on this new layer. I've got a colour here, it doesn't matter what colour it is, I happen to be using blue. I'll press Alt Backspace on a PC, Option Delete on a Mac. So this is my 4x6 piece. Now the first thing I have to do, and this is really important that you do it here now, is you're going to right click on this and you're going to convert it to a smart object. We're going to be working with smart objects. It's going to become really apparent why in just a minute. I'm going to press Control or Command D to deselect that selection. You can also choose Select, Deselect. I need a copy of this layer. I need a copy so that the smart object is copied properly. So I'm going to use Control or Command J and that just creates a new copy of this image. Now if you're used to doing copies other ways you probably want to just do the Control or Command J on this one because we absolutely need to get these copying correctly. So now we have two 6x4 images on this sheet that we're going to be selling to people. So let's go and make another one again. Control or Command J. I'm not going to fit another 6x4 in here but I would fit in a 3x2 which is the exact same size ratio as a 4x6. You can divide 4 by 2 and you get 2, you can divide 6 by 2 and you get 3 so that's a nice same ratio image. Just going to kick up the resize on this because I want to trigger the display of these values here and what I want is the width and height. So the width is going to be 3 and the height is going to be 2 and I'll click the check mark. And I'm going to make a few more of these. So I'll do Control J three times because that gives me three more layers. So I've got one, two, three, four layers of these size images. Now I want to distribute them evenly so I'll select all of the four of these layers and choose layer, distribute, vertical centers. And that just neatly presents them on the page so they're all nicely aligned. Well so far so good but we've just got a sheet of paper with lots of blue things on it. So let's see how we would actually make this work in real life if you like. So at this point I would save this. So let's do file, save and I'm going to call this for example 2 6x4 and there's 4 3x2s. And that's going to be my picture package and you can call yours whatever you like it doesn't matter but put it somewhere where you're going to be able to find it and name it something that's going to be appropriate to your use. So it might be design one for you because you have a series of different designs that you sell, however it works for you. So now let's go back to one of these layers, it doesn't matter which one and I'm going to double click on this thumbnail. And that opens up the smart object. So this is the blue shape that is repeated in this document over here. 
It's actually a smart object. It's a PSB file. It's embedded inside our master file. So what we want to do now is to replace this blue image with the image that we want to sell to our client. So I'm going to choose File and Place Embedded. Now I have my image over here. I'm just going to click on it and click Place. Now it's a different size, but that doesn't matter. All we're going to do is press Control T to make sure we get our transform handles, Control Zero to size the image so we can see what's going on. And we just need to bring this image in to match the size of the blue area. Now we can't have any blue showing or else that's going to show in our final production. We want to make the image just a little bit bigger than the blue area. Now with the sizing I just did, I held down Shift and Alt. That would be Shift and Option on the Mac. That just sizes the image down nice and evenly. So I'm just going to click the check mark to confirm that transformation. Double check there's no blue bits hanging out here. Close this smart object. So I'm just going to click the close button and I do want to say it. I'll click yes. This is how the picture package is going to work. This is why we took all the trouble of setting it up because we now have a document that at any time we can create this picture package by simply opening the document. All we need to do is to double click on one of these layers. It doesn't matter which layer and it doesn't matter if we choose the small ones or the big ones because they're exactly the same. We'll come in here and we'll change this image. Let's go and place a different image in here. I've got a photo of some zebras. This is coming in as a camera raw image, but that's fine. That'll work too. This time I'm going to size it again with the shift and option keys or shift and alt keys just to make sure it's nice and big enough in this case. Now I don't want this image anymore and because it's going to be placed inside the original file, it's best to get rid of it because otherwise the file is going to be ginormous. And so I'm going to close this, say yes to saving it. And here we have our picture package. So this is going to work perfectly for images that are sized to the same scale. So we've got here a 6x4, here we've got 3x2s, they're exactly the same size ratio. Now this can also work if you've got same ratio images but rotating them. So let's go and get this image. I'm going to hold the shift key as I rotate it so that I can rotate it in multiples of 15 degrees. So I'm just going to place that in position. Let's get rid of these three because it's going to be easier just to duplicate this one two extra times. And so what I'm going to do now is just arrange these. So even if you've got images that are on the side and they've been rotated around, they're going to work exactly the same way as images that are upright. So let's just prove that again. Go and select one image, double click on it. We'll go and do File Embedded. We'll go and select the little girl again, resize her with Control T, Control Zero, hold Shift and Alt Option on the Mac, close this and save it. And you can see that it's working exactly the same way if our images are rotated. So if you need to rotate them to fit them better, then that is an option too. Now, if you want to put together a package where the images are not in the same size ratio, then we're going to tackle that next. So I've just saved away the file that we were working on and I've reopened what's going to be my template file, my two 6x4 and 3x2 images. But say we didn't want these to be 3x2s, we want them to be a different size. So let's have a look and see how we would deal with that situation. There is a right way and a wrong way. The obvious thought that you have is that if I shrink this up, somehow that's going to work. Well, let's go and see what happens when we replace our smart object. All of these are just fine, but look what happened to the one that we shrunk. We obviously can't resize a smart object that way. It just doesn't work. So I'm actually going to trash that because it's really quite a mess. I'm going to make a copy of this one with Control or Command J because I still need a smart object. I just need to be smarter working with my smart object. So let's just zoom into this area of the image up here. We already know that resizing the smart object is not going to work. So we need a way of making this image smaller somehow. We can size it in proportion because we know that sizing in proportion works, but it's when we want to make this image a different size ratio that we're going to get into trouble. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to make sure I know which layer I'm working on here. 
and I'm going to just above this layer I'm going to put an empty new layer go to the rectangular marquee tool and we're going to drag out a shape to use but before I do that I need to go back to normal as my setting otherwise I'm going to be creating a 6x4 again so let's consider the situation when you might be using this picture package and generally it might be for production work so you might have a series of portraits and so chances are that your person is in the middle so the shape that we're going to draw is going to be over the middle of this image and this time I'm going for a one for one so I'm just holding down the shift key as I do this so I'm creating a shape that is a square totally not in that 3 by 2 proportion I'm going to fill that shape by pressing alt backspace on the PC option delete on the Mac so this is going to be my shape I'm just going to deselect my selection with control or command D so what I want to do is to make this image at the back this shape the way I do it is I now drag the shape below the layer I'm working on so this is the shape and it's immediately below the shape it's going to relate to I'm going to target the layer that has the smart object on it so I'm targeting this layer here and I'm going to choose layer create clipping mask and that clips this smart object layer to the shape below so when we go back out you can see that we have a smaller size image now if you want to move this around you have to grab both layers so you have to grab this one and this one the one that is the smart object and the shape that it's cropped to and then you can move them around so let's just put this over here got snap turned on so I'm going to use the control or command key just to be able to move it in position manually so there is an image that is a one-to-one -one crop if we want to make a duplicate of that then we're going to select the smart object and the shape and together we're going to press control or command J and that's going to make a duplicate of both of them and they're still selected so at this point don't deselect them just leave them selected because you want to move them and so now we can have shapes that are not the same ratio in the same picture package but we have to do it this way we have to create shapes and we have to clip the individual smart objects to those shapes let's prove that this all works so let's go back to one of these smart objects I'm going to double click on it let's go and replace it with file place embedded let's go and get our picture control T control zero hold shift and alt that would be shift option on the Mac resize it we want to get rid of our zebras that's really important because we don't want to be storing overly large images in this file let's close this save it all of these have changed now the reason why I was really careful about the placement of these blue objects is because potentially in a portrait situation the person is going to be in the middle but if you wanted to you could alter this so what you're going to do is you're going to the smart object part not the blue bit and on the smart object if you just have it selected you can move it around but of course it's not going to move around in any other of these images so this one's not going to be the same as this so probably you just want to settle on a reasonable set of shapes that's going to work for 99.9% .9 of your images so you can now create these picture packages if you have a series of image layouts that you want to sell you're going to create a picture package for every single one of them you're going to open your template up you're going to replace your smart object and you're going to hit the print button this is not the picture package tool that we had in earlier versions of Photoshop but it is as near as I can get to it it's flexible it works and I really really hope you enjoy it and I hope that it works for you if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up please click the subscribe button click the notification button and you'll get notifications until next time my name is Helen Bradley and thank you very much for joining me here on my YouTube channel